Hi, my name is Otiana. You may remember me as the reporter on the run. This year, I'm going to be tackling a new challenge. I'm going to be doing the 31 kilometer race at the Berkebeiner Festival. So today I'm here at Track and Trail to talk to the owner, Bob Schilf, about uh, buying cross country skis. Bob has been doing this for 30 years. So Bob, can you tell me uh, what's one piece of advice you'd give new people buying cross country skis? Well, in order to make the uh, sport enjoyable for the people, they have to make sure that a, their footwear is very comfortable. And secondly, that the skis are sized properly for the skier. And can you tell me, the big question is for people, what's the difference between waxable and waxless skis? Okay, the easiest would be to show you. Um, I've got two skis here. Um, hopefully you can pick that up on, on the video. I've got one which is waxless and one which is waxable. So the main difference between the two is that in the waxless area um, of this ski, if it's a waxable ski, you have to put kick wax on there. So you have to actually rub kick wax onto the ski in order for, to allow the skier to get grip to go forward. Um, the big difference for the skier in terms of um, the use of the ski isn't really that different, though in colder conditions a waxable ski will work better, but it's more of the ease of, of um, just basically getting on your skis and going and not having to worry about any prep. You just step on and you go, and that's the advantage of waxless over waxable. Generally, waxable skis um, allow you to have more um, adjustment in um, the way the skis work. So for example, if you're um, not getting proper grip, you can change the wax to get proper grip. If you're not getting enough glide, you can change the wax. Well, you can't do that with waxless. So if you're doing a race like the Berkebeiner, what uh, ski should you choose? We generally definitely recommend waxable because you get, overall you get a, uh, a better kick and a better glide, so less work.